Hey, A to Z English Podcast listeners, it's Jack here, and we just want to announce that we are now on WeChat. Our WeChat ID is A to Z English Podcast. That is A to Z English Podcast, one word, all lowercase. And if you join the group, you'll be able to talk with me, you'll be able to talk with Social, and we can answer your questions, we can read your comments on the podcast. So we'd love for you to join us and be active in our WeChat group. Our WeChat ID is A to Z English Podcast. Thanks. See you on the app. Welcome to the A to Z English Podcast. My name is Jack and I'm here with my co-host Sochal. And I'm going to let Sochal introduce today's topic. So Sochal, what would you like to talk about today? Jack, I kind of want to talk about funeral traditions um, in different cultures. So I was going to talk about, you know, uh, Mexican traditions, because I just went through that with my grandfather passing. Um, I guess yeah. he passed less like a week ago now, maybe, um, yeah. or a little less than a week ago. So... Yeah, I don't know. If, and I then, uh, I guess I can just get into it. Sure. Um, I don't know how to kick this off, actually. <laughs> oh, no, it's <laughs> right. Um, maybe start with the just just the process um, is uh, in, in American culture. Um, there's a, a I guess the, there's kind of two two aspects to it, right? There's the funeral and the wake. Mm-hmm. And the wake is more like a, a a gathering where people get together and um there's maybe some sometimes there's food I think is if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, so and I think the interesting thing about that in American culture and maybe this is true in in every culture it seems odd to be eating at that time. You know what I mean? Right. Like no one yeah. has an appetite. People are grieving. Um, they're upset. Um, but I feel like maybe the food preparation is a distraction. Um, it's uh, it, it's it's focusing on our executive function of our brain, the the part that is just very analytical and just doing things. And I think that is a distraction from the pain and the grief. Would, mm-hmm. would you agree with that? I think so. I I think um, that also it's because a lot of people who aren't like super close family come. And so they're like, you know, they're, they're kind of there to help in certain, in a certain way or just, you know, um, for emotional support, but they're, uh, they're probably going to be hungry because I don't think they're mourning <laughs> at really like the same way, you know? Right. Right. Um, I mean, they're, they're sad, I'm sure, but it's like a little different. So I think it's like, it's kind of a way for the family to say, thank you. Um, in yeah. Mexican tradition that happened, that happens too, but it's like a two day affair where you have to be like awake all night. Mm-hmm. You're like up for 48 hours straight, basically, because you can't leave the body alone. Oh, OK. OK, because that's different than American culture where the the body is um, is is uh, in the casket. Um, but uh, you don't have to stay uh, up all night uh, with with the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, this the body was in the casket, but we do have to stay with the body because it's like i don't know i guess it's to prevent bad spirits like in old in old mythology or whatever to prevent bad spirits from like latching on to the soul or the body so you have to stay there like 48 hours and it's really hard my sister and i kind of were with my mom in shifts so i would like stay up the whole time then i would go to sleep then she would stay up okay um, so we didn't have to do the whole 48 hours thing. I did have to stay up more than my sister cause she traveled plus she's in vet school. So she was like sleeping a, for a lot, large portion of it. 
But um, when she finally woke up, she was she stayed with the body, and then I went to sleep, and I woke up in the morning. Um, so, yeah. and with the his like sisters and nieces and nephews, they kind of did shifts as well. So like one day, I think my aunt was my great aunt was there, and the other day my um cousin, I guess, was there, and it's like the family just kind of did shifts, I guess. Yeah, um, but it sounds like you didn't get much sleep, though. You you sound no. exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, it was very tiring and very hard because you're, like, dealing with a lot of grief. And on top of that, you're, like, serving people food and running around and serving people, like, um, drinks. Not alcoholic drinks, but just regular drinks. But you still, you're, you're running around serving people, like, soft drinks and food and... It's just only something like you have to make these two giant, you have to make like, so we had cinnamon tea and coffee and then sweet bread, like, uh, like pastries um, mm-hmm. at night, the first night. And then the next morning we had like breakfast and we had, like, we also had pastries, coffee and, and cinnamon tea. And then we had like mole, which is like a, it's a chocolate based, like, sauce you know yeah i don't know if you've ever tried mole no but i i you've mentioned it before in the podcast i think yes i have um it's yeah. kind of different mole de olla is different because it's not it's just like it's a completely different dish i don't know why they share the same name okay. but mole the paste is like a different dish um and there's a there's like seven different types of moles this one is like a black mole which is kind of sweet a little bit sweet and spicy um and it's very thick it has a bunch of ingredients like chocolate chilies charred tortilla um peanuts i think and different things like that so and we ate that with rice and chicken and then the next day after the funeral we also or before the funeral i think or after i can't remember we served no it was after the funeral we served eggs in salsa verde and uh black beans but it's like kind of crazy because you're like running on no sleep and making all these meals for people so it's kind of like i don't know it's kind of wild and then like the family like my mom i think was up like the whole 48 hours oh wow i saw her sleep once and it was for like 15 minutes right right is she (laughs) and and uh you know for her this is uh both of her parents have passed in the within a very short period of time yeah within four months from each other because my grandmother passed at the end of february my grandfather passed at the very end of june yeah yeah so yeah Yeah. she was up the whole night and serving people food and soft drinks and it just seemed like a really stressful night time for her and i feel like really terrible for her because she's she's like in charge she's also the executor of the will okay. um which means she has she has a lot of work to do right a lot of a lot of documents that have to be signed and uh yeah a lot of responsibility mm-hmm. in that in that respect yeah yeah so that's very difficult so yeah, yeah I, I think it's just interesting i think I think it's it's kind of cool and very interesting how people are up for like for there's always people at your house for the whole 48 hours and it's kind of interesting but i i just felt so suffocated like i wished it was just us like his closest family so i could just pull a mattress out and sleep on the floor close to the body like yeah. i just i just or, or just cry it. you know like it, it, if you feel a little bit um I, I maybe I, and i'm pre- i'm just uh, making an assumption here but um do you feel like you you're you let you you can't be vulnerable when there are people who you don't know very closely around is it is yeah is- it was definitely hard but like when i first saw when like when i first got in there and saw the casket i just wailed anyway because it was just so intense yeah um it was like it was different because with my grandmother, it's like I didn't really cry. I didn't I I cried a little bit with my grandfather. I cried a little bit with my grandmother, but with this grandfather, I cried a lot more. I think it's just like all the compound of them all dying so close together, and then um, 
it was just sadder because I felt like we didn't really get to say goodbye because the Mexican hospital system is really a mess. <laughs> and uh, with my grand, with my paternal grand grandfather, he was um, he had like dementia, so we kind of got to say a slow goodbye to him. Yeah. So it was different, and then he passed. But it's like you know, he was he was really suffering. It was a it was a slow burn kind of goodbye, and so. It kind of felt more like he was ready to go, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This with one my, was more sudden. It was. Yeah, in a way, like with my maternal grandmother who passed before my maternal grandfather, I, I was living with her at the time. So I like saw her decline in real time. Yeah. Um, And I and we were there with her every step of the way in the hospital. Um, We were we also stayed at the ICU for like the whole week, basically. Um, But we got to see her every single day and hear about you know what's going on so with this one it was just kind of a shock because like only one person could go in i think per day and it would only be like 30 minutes for mm -hmm. 30 minutes and um it was very restricted and they didn't really keep you updated on anything so the last couple days we thought he was stable and he was getting better so i was like I was kind of slowly planning my way to get over there. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It makes perfect but sense. I was like, he he'll be fine. That's what we were understanding. So for me, it was like, Oh, like I'm gonna, I'll, I'll plan my, I'll just, um, I have to get it together to plan with my aunt about when I'm going to Mexico city and when her and I are going to head to the U S um, and so we were, I was just looking at flights when I got the call uh, from my aunt that he had passed. And I was just like, it really shocked me, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it was like, I really wasn't expecting it. And my, my mom and aunt didn't even get to say goodbye. He had wow. already passed. So yeah, it's just, yeah, it's very hard. I think when there's less closure like that. Mm-hmm. And you think someone's going to get better and then they don't. And it's just very like confusing and <sighs> very hard on you. So yeah, yeah, with this one, I, I did cry, even though there are people there, of course I didn't feel like as comfortable. Um, but I just broke down anyway. It's like, I couldn't help it. Oh no. And I, people are, are very uh, sympathetic to, to that. I'm, I, I think we, in 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 Mexican culture, you you mentioned before in other podcasts that it's a, a kind of a masculine uh, um, uh, culture. Yes. Um, so Patriarchal. kind of suff suffocating, pushing down your feelings um, in in public. Is you know trying to be stoic. Stoic means like you know trying to be strong. Um, and and I I feel like we that's also part of the United States culture when it comes to these things is like you know don't break down and I wish we could be more vulnerable with each other and in those situations and and just really let our true emotions come out and it sounds like you you did that and it yeah. probably was healthier to do that yeah I pretty much was beyond giving a crap about whatever anyone around me thought you know what i mean yeah, so i yeah. i broke down so yeah it was it was very hard and then you know we had the funeral um procession kind of thing and they carried the casket and we stood around um watching him get lowered into the like the grave and um kind of different in mexico because mexico city is huge so it's like one small lot and it kind of looks like a house from outside like a small house like a one room house or something oh <laughs> like, okay yeah. yeah it has doors that lock and like a window and like a roof and everything and it's yeah. like kind of like a really tiny mausoleum but like a really tiny one but not it doesn't look like a mausoleum it just looks like a little tiny house like a one room house so we opened it and then they like pull the concrete slabs out and there's like 10 it's like a like a 15 foot hole or a 12 foot hole like and it's like 10 slabs that you could bury different people in on both sides okay is this a family um, plot here that yeah it's a family plot okay 
So, I, I think that if I'm, you know, I'm, I, I don't mean to uh, be um, to diminish this or anything, but um, I, I remember seeing a little house like that in the movie Coco. oh yeah And yes that's kind of how it's like yeah yeah, okay. yeah yeah it is like that and um so we we uh lowered him down in there and they put my grandmother's ashes with him actually in the same casket Oh, that that's was sweet. that was a uh a, a that was a moment of anger for all of us because his freaking sister my grandfather's sister who's my great aunt said if we wanted to put the ashes in with him we could put her ashes at his feet Oh. Like, why would you even say that? You know what I mean? I wasn't there when she said that, or I would have been so mad. Um, but, you know, we just put them, they were like next to his arm, I guess. Um, Yeah, yeah. You you want uh, holding each other, not yes. yeah. You know. Not one like beneath the other one. It's like, you know, but so we got him, we watched him get lowered in the slab and then they like bricked him in. Basically, they have to brick people in because they don't want them like stealing the body or like stealing anything that came that the body was buried with. Oh, Um, like grave, grave robbers kind of situation. yeah, yeah, a grave robber situation. So they like brick him in Yeah. to his slab in the grave. So it was kind of a very interesting process. And and the I I was getting very like lightheaded and nauseous and they everyone thought i was gonna faint and um my great one of my other great aunts pulled out a ziploc bag and it had a white onion cut into quarters and she took the a quarter of a white onion and sprayed it with rubbing alcohol that she had in a little spray bottle in her purse and she handed it to me to like sniff so that was supposed to help me not pass out um and it did help weirdly i felt way better Really? Okay. I was, I would have thought maybe the smell of onion would make it worse, but. Um, yeah. I definitely it's like interesting because you don't really smell the onion that much because your face is like right up against it and it has rubbing alcohol on it so the only thing that the onion does is like i guess the juices from the onion make the rubbing alcohol more mild so it doesn't like burn your nose when it comes up they like react Okay. together somehow so like you can still smell the strong smell of like alcohol but it doesn't like burn your nostrils Yeah. Um, so that was interesting. And, uh, my boyfriend and my sister said that, um, the onion, like the smell of the onion was kind of making them nauseous, but I didn't notice. And they didn't tell me until after the funeral. Um, cause I guess they were further away. So it like smelled weird to them. Yeah. And then my aunt really made me laugh cause she was kind of right next to me and she, but she didn't see, she was like right kind of in front of me. And so since she didn't see my onion, she, She was like, why does it smell like guacamole? <laughs> Oh, that's and I was like, huh? that's that's funny. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, it's like a moment of humor in all of it. So Right. that really kind of stuff. A little levity was probably what everyone needed in that moment. Yeah, so, you know, we had a good laugh about that. <laughs> and then it was, yeah, there were some moments where definitely we had a couple laughs. So, and then, yeah, we went back home and, and that was kind of it. Um, there are some certain things you do with the body. Like I got to see his body and it was different because my grand, the way my grandmother passed her body looked very different. And then when my grandfather passed, when they put him in a casket, it just looked like he was sleeping. Um, and they put like coins in his pocket for his passage and shoe special shoes, like what I just like on him, which are traditional shoes. So he, and different things. And, and my sister and I said, we, why didn't we didn't give any of this to my grandmother um and so we just we gave him extra money to pay for her passage because <laughs> we thought she might be waiting since no one gave her any money to pay for her passage um Yeah. through That's um interesting. It sounds like there's like a lot of little little things that you have to to do. yeah like a lot of little things you have to remember Um Yeah. Yeah. And big things. But yeah. How well, how are Korean funerals, Jack? I'm curious about that. I've never been to one. I've seen them in like K-dramas and movies, but I've never like been to one. Yeah, so the Korean funerals are interesting. They're they're very different. It's um the my my wife's grandmother passed um probably going on oh gosh uh ten or or twelve years ago something like that 
and um, what happens is there's there's kind of an extra wing of of hospitals that are kind of set up for uh, funerals, and what happens is um, the the body is is uh, cre cremated um, for the most part in Korea. That's the the tradition. I think it probably comes down to the size of the country. Um, land and the is, population. yeah, exactly. It's, 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 um, it's, it's rare to, to bury a body. Um, and, um, so the body is, is, um, prepared and, and cremated at the, at that facility that is attached to the hospital, I believe. And then in the hospital, you get like a, a room and it's, it's a large room with an eating area. And then there's a, 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 a nice, a very nice uh, photograph of the deceased person and kind of like, almost like a shrine kind of set up, um, you know, flowers okay. and things like that. And outside when you, when you enter this, this large room, um, the, uh, like your if the company you work for will always send flowers and it's the flower arrangements are always these um kind of tall uh flower arrangements with a big ribbon uh expressing condolences and so mm -hmm. i think the the more um the more influential you were or the more people you know you knew um the more flowers are sent you know so it it can it it's very important I think to to have a lot of those outside um and outside the door when people enter um when you when you enter the room uh, people you will uh, give some money and so there was a one family member that's sitting there collecting an envelope of uh, of money mm -hmm. um, that goes to the family uh, to pay for the funeral costs and um, wh whatever uh, 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 other things that need to be paid for. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then there's, uh, there's some food where you can, you sit, they invite you to, to ha sit down and have a meal. And there is no, there is no like formal kind of ceremony thing in, in that, uh, in, in that, uh, at that time um, you, but what, what happens is you have this, this room this large room for three days. So, and that's what's so interesting to me is that the family stays there for three days. So there's like, a, I believe there's a bathroom and a shower. Um, and, you know, you can, you sleep there and, and uh, you know, people will get up at different hours and people will arrive at all kinds of different hours. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it goes back to, maybe the older times during the uh uh the the Joseon dynasty the the one before uh, the the last dynasty uh, in Korea and um at those times you know if you were to hear about the passing of a relative you would you would start your trek to that location and so i think the 3 days is enough time for most people to make it there um now mm -hmm. nowadays it seems a little bit um unnecessary or we could say antiquated which just means like um it's an older tradition that, that no longer is it's still followed but um it's it's not necessarily necessary because people can get there very quickly within you know a day you can get to the uh, to the hospital and go to that special wing of the hospital where the, um, I, I guess the, the, the paying respects to the family, uh, occurs. And then there's an urn An urn is, is a, a, a container, a kind of a beautiful ornate container that has the ashes inside of it. And that's also, I believe, um, up there with the uh, photograph and uh, people will, you know, come and, and, you know, give their condolences to the family. 
Um, but that three day waiting period was kind of interesting to me. Um, be not waiting period, but the three day uh, period of time where the family is stays together in that one place kind of reminds me of what you were talking about of like staying awake with the body for uh, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's something about that. And I, I know there's another in the Jewish tradition, there's something called uh, sitting Shiva. And Shiva is where the body is. Um, sometimes it's in, in a person's house. Um, and they sit with the body for, I, I don't remember exactly how many days, but people will come and they will sit down and they will mourn with the family and then they will leave and other people will come and and come and go and it, it's kind of interesting how some of these traditions seem to overlap a little bit like there's something about maybe there's something um important about just sitting in your grief with your loved one who's passed and then kind of getting a collective hug from all the people that knew that person and loved that person and, you know, coming and sitting with the family. I feel like in, in American culture, it's, you know, the, the most we get is like, um, you know, someone will come up at the wake or, or uh, the funeral and say, I'm sorry for your loss. And then that's, that's kind of it, you know, um, mm -hmm. there isn't like a, a longer, it's kind of like, uh, this is uncomfortable. I want this to be over as quickly as possible. And right. it seems like in Mexican culture and Korean culture and in uh, Judaism um, or Jewish culture, um, there's something about fighting through that discomfort and getting to a much more honest place where you can act, cry together, uh, mourn together, laugh together sometimes. Um, there, you know, it, it's not always, um, mournful. Sometimes there are happy memories and, and share, they share stories and things like that. And so I thought it was, was really beautiful. Um, and there's one other aspect of Korean, um, funerals that are, that are interesting. And, and that is the, uh, uh, close friends and, and family will do almost a, a performative kind of weeping and now sometimes it's it's genuine i'm i'm sure but i did see this happen and the woman was wailing and 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 crying and and you know um i i don't understand korean very well but i you know it sounded like she's saying no how can this be this is you know unfair and and then after she was done weeping all of a sudden her face changed right back to normal and that's so crazy. I realized, oh, this is a performative thing um, out, out of, you know, paying respect to the person who's passed that, you know, showing um, how, how much you've stirred up my emotions internally. Um, but it was interesting how she, she kind of came out of it really quickly. And so I was I was I was really intrigued by, by that aspect of it as well. Yeah, it might be like a catharsis, I think, as well, where like it's like you get to let out all your mourning and wail as loudly as you want and everything. And then after it's over, you're kind of just like empty, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's probably that's exactly what it is. I think that's what it is, because I, I know that um, some people were were um, a, a little bit uncomfortable with it or or I, I noticed that maybe they because i'm a i'm a foreigner they they were like oh this you know maybe I, I don't know if they were embarrassed a little bit or something of of this happening but i was just um I, you know I, I didn't know um my wife's grandmother very closely so for me kind of being there was kind of an out of body experience you know i i felt like very much an observer kind of in a in a in a very foreign situation and so mm. almost like an anthropologist i was kind of documenting all of the the things that were occurring and uh kind of viewing it that way 
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it was, it's just it was, like, it's, it's funny. Like, and then they, they come to our culture when they see, like my mom was really shocked and cause actually in Mexican culture, uh, I think it's normal to, you know, to cry like that too, a little bit at least. And in American culture is really not, we're kind of more cold and rigid. And so I remember when my mom came to um, the U S and had to attend a funeral, she thought it was so weird how like even the closest family wasn't like breaking down. Yeah. She just saw it as like very strange. And it's funny cause they have like a completely opposite um, experience when they come to our culture as well. And for me, it was fun. It was like such a moment of being bicultural because like when at the funeral, when you're lowering the casket, I, when I thought I was going to faint, um, I was talking about it on the way back in the car on the way back to, from Mexico city to Oaxaca. And my, so it was my dad and my aunt and my mom there. And, you know, so driving back and, um, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I thought I was going to faint, but I, I'd never seen anyone pull out the like an, a baggie with onions before, but it, it really helped. And my mom said, yeah, it's a really common thing to take when you're burying a body, um, at least in Mexico City, because it's like it's thought to help protect against people fainting. Yeah. Um, and my dad said, why would why would you faint? Like he asked me that. And my mom rolled her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> she looked so annoyed it was very funny because it's kind of like i get, get where, what he's talking about. yeah they're Sorry. like totally different the answer is so obvious it's just such a, a funny question you know it's like be because you know my close you know relative has just passed of course you know that's why um the in american culture the the idea of stoicism is is so strong it's like um we almost um respect it right when they don't cry cuz they'll they'll you know in the car ride home they'll say oh look how brave she was look how brave he was those are things i've heard you know my parents say before uh after a funeral right and it's like, why do we need to be brave at this time? Shouldn't we be totally raw and vulnerable and just, you know, exposed nerves and and, and just, you know, what can it why does it have to be so clean and 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 uh and and dare polished. I say cold? Yeah, polished. Yeah. yeah. It's like a t- it's a performance as well, just how it's funny, like just how you know we might see other cultures performing. Uh, grief in an like a vulnerable outward fashion they probably see us performing stoicism as very like bizarre behavior right right when you because it's the because the actions don't match the gravity of the situation it's like right. the yeah they're they're almost it's almost like um uh, you're yeah. accessing all this willpower to just not feel something and, and, and then, and then when people get home and then they're alone, they completely break down and because they've been suppressing all of these emotions for the last couple days. So I, I don't know. I'm, I, I, I really like the Korean funeral. If I, if I, um, got to choose, I would be okay with a a Korean funeral. That'd be okay with me. Hey, I think I want a mix of both cultures for me. I, I like I don't want people to have to like sit in the hospital and watch me suffer to death, you know, but you know, it ultimately the funerals for the people who loved you during your life and if however they need to grieve, I think that's okay with me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely absolutely and in the Korean funeral, there's, you know, there's soju, which is an alcoholic drink, um, is served pretty, um, uh, should I say? Liberally. Liber- liberally. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Um, and uh, I think that maybe helps suppress some of the the emotions. Um, but, uh, yeah, ultimately, I, I, did, I, I found it to be a beautiful uh, experience. Uh, even though it was a, a tragic one, but um, yeah, I, I, yeah, maybe, maybe there's,
something we can take away from each culture and, you know, put all the good parts together and, and, and have do it that way, you know? So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listeners, you'll have to let us know what funeral traditions are like in your home country. I'm really curious because I know there are some other cultures that also have extended like wakes. And um, yeah, I'm just really curious to know how you guys um, celebrate the life of those who passed on or how you mourn. So make sure to leave us a comment down below at a to z English podcast dot com. Shoot us an email at a to z English podcast at gmail dot com. And um, make sure to join the WeChat and WhatsApp groups. Remember that Jack and I are also having an English corner now that we do Monday to Friday, and that is for one hour in the morning uh, for me and in the evening Jack's time. So you'll have to message Jack directly to get the details. Um, but yeah, it's only $10 USD a month and you get 20 classes. So that's pretty good. 50 cents a class. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just really great. You get to converse and we we have topics like these that we talk about and it's just a really nice environment, um, friendly environment in there. Yeah. Very friendly. Yeah. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.